Now I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Service to the community is second nature to Harjit Singh Sajjan. As a former detective with the Vancouver Police Department in the Gang Crime Unit, a lieutenant colonel with the British Columbia Regiment, and a longtime advocate for youth education and mentorship programs, Harjit has made serving others a cornerstone of his life. He has participated in four deployments, one to Bosnia and three to Afghanistan. He has received numerous honors for his service, including the Meritorious Service Medal and the Order of Military Merit, one of the military's highest recognitions. Since his Sikh beliefs require him to keep his facial hair, which prevents the use of a regular military gas mask, Harjit invented his own gas mask and then patented it in 1996. On October 19, 2015, Harjit was elected as Member of Parliament for Vancouver South. In addition to his role as MP, he proudly serves in the Prime Minister's Cabinet as the Minister of National Defense. We are so thrilled to have Harjit here as our keynote speaker. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, extremely kind introduction. And uh, in a way, I'm a little upset that uh, I have to now speak after Valerie as well. So thank you for really putting me on the spot here. Um, it's, uh, first of all, Dr. Kapani, um, we met about a year ago. Oh, we met, actually met a few times before, but uh, you were receiving awards, and we know you very well. And, had the privilege of meeting you when I was visiting here last time, so thank you very much for uh, the absolute kind uh, invitation. Uh, and it was uh, this close that we couldn't come, but we're moving our schedule around that I said, you know, I promised to come and I had to come, so thank you very much for giving me this opportunity because it's about learning for me. Randeep, uh, my Fellow member of Parliament from uh, from uh, from uh, uh, Surrey, the uh, thank you very much for uh, your leadership as well, and also our uh, great leader, our senator from uh, Afghanistan, where I had the privilege of spending uh, about two years in total with my three deployments and learning about the country. It's a privilege to be with uh, you here as well, and Mr. Jezu, President of the Museum, thank you very much for uh, uh, for everything, ladies and gentlemen. I. Honestly, I really don't know why I am the keynote speaker. <laughs> Seriously. First of all, you had uh, uh, f five phenomenal uh, human beings who were just given uh, awards for their accomplishments. Any one of them uh, could be up here uh, as a keynote speaker, and actually any one of them should be up here as a keynote speaker. Uh, so one, congratulations to uh, every single one of you. Uh, Well-deserved. Uh, for your accomplishments, and I'm going to talk about uh, what that means in a second. As a Minister of National Defense, uh, my job is to look at foreign threats and to look at conflict around the world. And people see me now, but I want to actually bring you back to who I was and, and how I still remember myself. Because the Sikh Foundation, your 50th anniversary here, is uh, extremely important because we need to look at the past to look at where we want to go in into the future. Just think about where every single one of you were 50 years ago um, or where your families were. And last, uh, last week, I got to visit India um, as, as a representative of the Canadian government but also as a person who was born there. And I've been traveled all over the world, uh, but mostly to conflict zones. <laughs> and I've seen the youth and the children of the world as well. And when you're at a young age, you really don't see 
the world, you see your community. You don't see uh, the barriers are in front of you. you, you just, all you see is opportunity. You don't see um, differences. You just see other kids who you can play with. But for some reason, it comes to a point where you see starting differences. And you see where people, well, where you had confidence before to jump high or climb something, and then you don't have the confidence to move forward. And it's really sad in a way because I believe that every human being on this planet has a gift. And I've seen this. Every single human being is given a gift by Vaiguru or whoever you, uh, you know, what religion uh, domination you might believe in. Because I think for all of us, there is a sense of purpose. Why are we here? And I asked myself that question a lot because as I was traveling through India or even conflict zones, I see little kids in villages. And people see us now and your success in, the, in this way as well. But when I, I came from a small village in Bambili, uh, mud floors, no washrooms in the house, had to go to the village well to get water. And some of you already know this very well, and those of you, you know, I'm not actually looking for sympathy at all. In fact, actually, it was the happiest part of my life. I don't remember any negativity. I left Canada, sorry, left India in the village when I was five years old. But what was the difference between myself and my best friend? And honestly, I can't tell the difference. It was really just my parents made a choice. And the parents made a choice to come to Canada. And I was able to have some experiences in my life that gave me the opportunity and had a mentors. And through those challenges, uh, it, you know, you just don't rise to success. And all every single one of you in this room knows this extremely well. You have trials and tribulations. You have people that say no, that people want to actually prevent you from succeeding. But as you know, what Guruji gave us was determination. And you we succeeded. So when, I, when we look at our success right now, every single one of you are successful. Every single one of you are mentors. You give back to your community. You give back your time or, or, or with your donations. And I think a lot about what can we do to really change this world. Now there's policy things that we work on, but I'm going to talk to you from just from my own personal experience, not talking as a minister. And sorry, well, one thing I also want to say is I was very heartened by the, the five awards that were given to women because as you know, our, our, our prime minister uh, proudly calls himself a feminist. And we have a feminist government, and we are very proud of that. But there are challenges in this world. My wife and I uh, have been sponsoring, uh, supporting a charity, like many others uh, in Vancouver and around the world. It's called uh, through the Mamta Foundation, and they support unique homes. As some of you may, may, I don't know if you may have heard of it, it's uh, where um, uh, uh, an organization um, collects abandoned girls at, when they're babies. And um, we've been to many gala dinners for, to fundraising. And so after Amritsar, and I'm visiting Hamandasab, I got to go visit uh, Unique Homes. And it was so heartening to see all these girls Actually, and some young women, so different ages, being, and giving me these cards. And they did this dance, and some of them gave speeches, and all you saw was success, that gift that I was talking about. And then, um, Benji brought a 14-day-old girl who was found abandoned in a sack and thrown in a dry well. And that's just one 
of the girls that I saw. And I think, how could somebody do this? The point that I'm getting at, ladies and gentlemen, is we have, we do, we have succeeded, but we also have a lot of work to do. And me, I have a lot of work to do. And as you kind of tear up when you see this, because I'm holding on to this 14-day-old girl and I'm thinking about my kids, then this beautiful girl, Lucy, gives a speech in English, powerful speech, and with brilliant English and almost makes me look, seem like that I'm, I still have to learn English. In many ways, I still have to. Have to. And she gives this powerful speech. She's very proud. And her name is Lucy Kaur, right? And, uh, and then Benji, who looks after all the girls, she's a mother, mother to every, all the, the girls there, and she goes, when she was uh, just born, she was found in a dog's mouth. Now, horrible, right? Horrible, yes. But you had Prakash Deepkot, who was phenomenally, like with her gift, when, when we, we look, look at, at the, the, the abandonment, abandonment that was, was done there, there somebody, somebody didn't, didn't see any value. Lucy Gore is going to be going to university. university. There are there many girls, girls that were there that, there that had gone to university. Some, some are actually studying in the UK that were abandoned. abandoned. And that brings me back to that Thank gift. You. We look at conflict around the world right now. We want to change the world, and every single one of you knows this, and Dr. Grapani talked about it, is our youth. Not just our youth here, our youth around the world. But all of you youngsters who are sitting in this room, just if you haven't found your gift, you will. If you don't find it yourself, a mentor will find it for you. I truly believe it doesn't matter if you're abandoned or you're born here in this beautiful luxuries of our, both of our countries, Canada and the US, or whether you're the UK. Every human being has a gift. And it's a real tragedy if we don't help find that gift in that human being. Because the reason I say this is I get now people look at me as the Minister of National Defense or what I've done. But honestly, I was this barefoot little kid having a lot of fun in India without a washroom, didn't care, drinking you know, water from the well, and at night life was good. Well, what was the difference between my best friend, Mangu, who ended up committing suicide about five years ago, right? So what it comes down to, every single one of us has this wonderful opportunity. So all of you are mentors. If we really want to change the world, there's one thing that we can say is time. We all pass on. And if we really combine together, whether it's from governments, from businesses, uh, all of you, and help us find that gift in every child, and let them become that success. So when I go through an African village in some of the poor parts of Africa, as you know, there's a lot of considerable wealth there as well, or in India, every time I look at a child, I, it's, instead of just looking at, oh, what state that they're in, I'm like, wow, what could this person be if they had the opportunity? And imagine if we start with all of you who are at this table, the youngsters I'm talking about. So I'm not. We can't change the world immediately. But if we start focusing on our youth here, and not just turn, uh, now, how do we get this gift out? This is why, to me, this is very important. This is my own experience that I'm passing on. We need to answer the question of why, it's to, why we need to succeed. Sometimes we focus so much on the how, we forget the why. Whether it's, you know, what's that passion inside you? That's what we need to put into our children. And I think all of you know this, and you are doing that. So when I look at my kids, I'm like, I always ask the question, why? I want them to get excited. So if they want to do something, ask them why. I think if you can answer the question why, feel it inside you, the how becomes automatic. And not only automatic, 
the success that you want, the paycheck that you want, almost becomes irrelevant. Because you'll get that paycheck. I mean, there's, all of you are extremely successful. But you're going to do what you're, all of you are succeeding now. You're giving back to your community. You're going to have an impact around the world. And if you answer the question why, protect them, mentor them along the way, even when during their mistakes, these people are going to help change the world. Give them that confidence to do so. And I had the and if anybody says, oh, no, you cannot, one, if you say one person cannot change this world, I remember this one little girl who's not a little girl anymore. I got to meet her just a few weeks ago. Her name is Malala, and she got to uh, address our parliament. My God, she's a, she's a, she gave a powerful speech, by the way. You cannot embarrass our, our prime minister, okay, or put him on the spot. No one has. She did. I'm not joking. You need to hear this speech, okay? If she, her speech was so powerful, I'm, I'm literally standing right there uh, where she's talking. Like, I can't believe you just pulled this off. I can't even do that. Um, so point being, ladies and gentlemen, is, is one person can change the world. And every single one of you, in your own way, you're doing this. And one of the reasons I really wanted to be here is because every single one of your mentors, every single one of you are successful. You're already doing this. But how do we now take it to a whole new level? And I just want to let you know that I'm too also trying to accomplish this. And everywhere I go, and my staff knows this, that's the message that I have. Talking to the kid. If I usually would, my staff knows if there's somebody who wants to take a picture, and if it's an adult or a youth, I will always turn to the youth. Because that one moment can change somebody's life. It was my social studies teacher, grade nine who basically said to me, all of a sudden, um, I wanted to be something, and I kept making excuses, and he kept saying, why, why can't you do that? And I finally realized, he wasn't asking uh, for a reason. He was he's telling me to stop making excuses, answer the question why, and get on with it. And I never looked back ever since. And so that's what I do. So ladies and gentlemen, it's, I'm really looking at all of you for your leadership. I'm just a temporary Minister of National Defense. I'm a temporary member of Parliament. I have my experience from policing and the military, but all of you have a permanency, and that permanency is your success. So how do we work together? You know that you have an ally with, uh, with me, you have an ally with, with, uh, with our prime minister in helping to make a difference in this world. And if we focus on the youth, we really can do so. And our prime minister takes it so seriously that not only he's the prime minister of Canada, but he's also the minister of youth. So thank you very much for giving this wonderful privilege of standing up here to talk to all of you and share my experience. So like I said, you think you, I'm here to give a keynote speech. I'm here to actually meet all of you and get inspired so I can learn and do things. And by the way, I had a patent. I couldn't do anything with it, okay? So you gotta give me some uh, business advice as well. So thank you very much.